So as has been said uh, the other day about Dhamma relatives, Dhamma family, we all are members of Dhamma family. So we need to help each other, Dhamma wise. And since you have come here to ask help, Dhamma help, we are here to give you the Dhamma assistance. So today we are going to begin with this Dhamma assistance to you all during the 60-day retreat. So the topic during this whole 60-day retreat will be the right path leading to the right destination. If you go the right path, if you walk the right path, you will develop wisdom leading to peace. You will come to the land of peace. However, Today, before we go on to the main topic, Sarah says he wishes to talk about the nine factors leading to the development of your practice, which will be very supportive to the retreat. So before we go on to the main uh, discourse, Sarah says he will talk about the importance of Satipatthana practice and how to help in the practice, namely the development of controlling faculties. We need to control our faculties in order to be able to enhance or develop our Satipatthana practice. Everybody needs this kind of thing, that is, not to make mistakes, not to do wrong things, physically, verbally, and mentally. No wrongdoing by body, speech, and mind. And in order to do that, we'll have, we need to control our, our faculties, develop our controlling faculties, sharpening our controlling faculties, which is very important in this practice. If we cannot develop these controlling faculties, then we'll not be able to control ourselves, and what will happen? You will become the loser. <clears throat> you will be the loser, not the winner. Then the result is that you will become defiled. At the same time, others will be affected. Others will be harmed. That means harming both your, yourself and others. <clears throat> If we cannot control, if we cannot sharpen our faculties, if we cannot control ourselves, our culture, our culture means the culture of the world, will disappear. Then what will happen? We will become like animals. So in the practice of Satipatthana, it is necessary to control ourselves, that means sharpen our controlling faculties so that we can be the winner, not the loser. So it is necessary to develop these uh, abilities, qualities, to sharpen our controlling faculties. And there are nine causes to sharpen these faculties, and uh, Jaro says he will try to finish it, cover it, cover this subject within one hour in brief. As I say, in the Dharma, in Vipassana, that uh, those who practice Vipassana will develop Sadda. Sadda means faith and confidence. In the practice of Vipassana, we concentrate our psychophysical phenomena in our body, paying attention to our body, namely the psychophysical phenomena which are subject to cause and effect. 
in order to realize or to see the three characteristics, namely the impermanent nature of things, the impermanent nature, the impermanent nature of psychophysical phenomena, the unsatisfactoriness, because they are impermanent, they cannot be satisfactory. And because they are impermanent and unsatisfactory, they cannot be relied upon. There is nothing to depend upon. There is no such thing as self or soul or atta to depend upon. So you come to realize that with the practice of vipassana. Seeing the variety of characteristics clearly, that is what is meant by insight knowledge, vipassana jnana. And uh, by so doing, we are seeing the truth, truth in ourselves, truth in others. Then we will come to acceptance and resolution. That is faith and confidence. Faith and confidence in the truth with the practice of vipassana. Seeing the cause and effect relationship by yourself, not through hearsay, but by your own experiential knowledge, you come to acceptance. And that kind of acceptance, faith and confidence become unshakable because this is realized through your own personal experience. You see the Dhamma nature, the nature of the truth, the nature of things. <clears throat> and in this way, you develop your faith and confidence so that it becomes unshakable, very strong. Because you see the Dhamma truth by yourself with your own practice and you become satisfied with it. Saying to yourself, coming to a resolution, that this is correct. You come to acceptance. You come to a resolution or determination. Seeing the nature of the truth, seeing the nature of the Dharma, by seeing the truth, you'll also come to accept the existence or have faith in the individual who has given the truth, who has given the Dharma. And also, once you are able to see the truth by yourself with your own practice, you will come to accept that there are these individuals who see, who practice in this way and see the truth and be able to overcome defilements so that you come to accept the existence of the Sangha, the community of monks who have practiced and realize the truth and be able to overcome defilements. And also seeing that good begets good, bad begets bad. That is having faith in karma and karma results. That if you do good, you will realize good. If you do bad, you will become bad. This is how you uh, have faith and in the karma and karma result, the karma, the result of your own actions. This is not, this acceptance is not through reason, ordinary reasoning, through intelligence, but it's through your own experience and knowledge, through your own practice. And uh, you will come to accept that these things, actions, good or bad, are the causes of your future good and bad results. And since you have accepted this, you know that this has happened in the past, and this is happening in the present, and also will have happened in future. And because of these good and bad actions, you are continuing your existences in the realm of this beginningless, beginningless realm of rebirths and rebirths. And this is not, this acceptance and faith and confidence is not through hearsay, but through your own personal knowledge, experiential knowledge. In this way, 
Your sadha, faith and confidence, develops leap by leaps and bounds. So you come to accept because of your own experience and because it happens to you, you will also realize that this will also happen this will also happen in others. So this is a daring uh, acceptance, faith and confidence, a bold acceptance of truth so that you can act and speak about it boldly, without any hesitation, and at the same time with the practice, you are developing your sadha, faith and confidence, you are developing your virya, energy, you are developing your mindfulness sati, you are developing your concentration as a samadhi and penya, wisdom. And in this way, you can develop yourself and also help others develop it. Previously, these controlling faculties, these five faculties, Sada, Vriya, Sadi, Samadhi, Penya, were not strong enough. They were very weak. They did not have much energy. And this controlling faculty in Pali is known as Indriya Bala. Now you are enhancing these faculties, beginning with sadha, faith and confidence. Just like when there is good administrator, the people, uh, the, the country will be probably controlled and administered. So too, because you have developed your controlling faculties in yourself, you will be able to control yourself. So that all these unwholesome things <coughs> will be subdued. So that there will be no wrongdoing. So that you will not be defiled, at the same time you will not be harming others. Because you are winning over yourself. Because you are winning over yourself, you will not be defiled. At the same time, you will not be harming others. So in this way, you develop sada, from sada, viriya, energy, and then other faculties such as sati, samadhi, penya. The sada will develop by stages, continuously. And so will be virya, energy. It will also arise gradually by stages, stage by stage. And so will be your mindfulness, sati. It will also develop, strengthen, stage by stage. So will also be your concentration, samadhi. And Penya also will develop stage by stage continuously. So in this way it will go round and round like a circle. So that <coughs> these three, five, uh, five controlling faculties will develop and develop. So today the practice of Vipassana is in order to, is to develop these controlling faculties. By doing so, so by doing in this way, you will be able to gain your assurance in this very life. The assurance of life. By sharpening these five controlling faculties. Indriya Bala. Hence, in the beginning, it is said that this is your Pali expression, which I will uh, say slowly. Navakarehi Indriyani Tekhani Bhavanti. That means 
there will be five, nine factors uh, which, uh, which are the causes for the, for the development of these controlling faculties. This is how the expression begins. The first uh, factor is uh, seeing only the destruction of arisen formations. In Bali, Hopa Nupana, Sankara Nam, Kayami Wat Pasadi. In this expression, there is this uh, Bali expression called Sankara or Sankara, which means the conditioned uh, psychophysical phenomena which arise in the body. So right now we are concerned with ourselves and our body. Sankara means conditioned phenomena, conditioned psychophysical phenomena, both mind and body. Let us say, now Sierra is speaking something, giving a talk. There is this uh, voice. Now this voice uh, is not causeless. It has its causes. Because there is this intention or the desire to talk. The desire, this kind of desire or wish, uh, arises by stages continuously, giving rise to the, fo- the voice of the sound coming out of his mouth. Now this, uh, there are two things which causes this sound, that is the, the hard substance, the substance in his body, and the mind, the mental, the causes of these two things. Because of this hardness in the body, the hard substance in the body, hard element in the body, and the, his, his uh, mind, there arises this voice. The voice comes out of his mouth, and you hear it. Just like uh, when two sticks hit each other, uh, they make a noise, so too, in this case. So these two hard substances uh, come into contact, giving rise to the voice. Now the substance, the elements which arise in the body is the result of karma. And the wish to speak is the mind. So these two things come into contact, giving rise to sound waves which come out of his mouth, such as Sankara. And there are these uh, six, sense, uh, six sense objects rising uh, uh, coming into, coming through the sixth sense doors, entering the sixth sense doors, giving rise to seeing, or seeing consciousness, hearing, hearing consciousness, and so on. All these are conditioned uh, phenomena. They arise, they arise continuously by stages, such are sankharas also. So all these things, it is said as Upanupanam. They just don't arise simply for an instant, but they do so continuously. Even if one is asleep, uh, these Sankaras, <coughs> conditioned uh, phenomena, formations, are arising continuously all the time. But they are not stationary, they arise and pass away. Prior to the practice, you have understood that these conditioned phenomena, psychophysical phenomena, (coughs) sankharas, rise and pass away. They are not stable for one instant. They only rise and pass away. That is how you accept this theory uh, in a rough way. In a rough way. Now when you practice meditation, through your own experiential knowledge, you come to see these psychophysical phenomena, sankharas arising and passing away, you come to acceptance. So that through your own experience, uh, experiential knowledge, you will not resist this. Uh, if somebody comes and says that uh, they, they are not, you know, uh, they are not. Uh, uh, they are permanent. They are not impermanent. If somebody comes and says something, you will not accept that. Or you will not, or yourself also, be insisting that things are permanent. 
because through your own experience and knowledge, these cycles of phenomena arise and pass away. So this is how you how you begin it. This is the first factor. You should not resist this uh, uh, this statement that that things are permanent. You will not resist it. You must accept it. So this is the first factor. Hence it is said that uh, the first factor is seeing only the destruction of arisen formations. You will not go on saying, oh, they don't, they are not destroyed. They are arising and arising and they are permanent. You will not do that. So first of all, you must see and believe only in the destruction of arisen formations, not the non-destruction of arisen formations. This is the first factor, uh, which is uh, causes first of the causes of sharpening, nine causes of sharpening difficulties. But of course, in the beginning, uh, you will not at once see the destruction of arisen formations. Uh, you will see these things when you're seeing noting rising and falling. You might first see them as one whole rising, one whole falling, as a one whole thing, you know, as an aggregate, let us say, as a one one whole thing. So when you uh, in the beginning, because your sati samadhi is not strong, you will not be able to see the destruction of origin formations. But you go on watching the abdomen and noting rising, every rising and falling, you come to see that the rising, if you uh, note from the beginning to the end of rising, it arises and it will not be stable, it is destroyed, it comes to, the, <laughs> to an end or passes away. When you, know, when you know falling from the beginning, you follow the falling from the beginning to end, you will see the arising and passing away of the psychophysical phenomena. In this case, the arising and passing away of falling object. So, note every rising and falling, you will see the destruction of arisen formations. Just follow these objects from the beginning to the end, from the beginning of rising to the end of rising from the beginning of falling to the end of falling. Thus, you will come to accept this, or you come to see or accept the destruction of arisen formations, which is the first of the nine factors. So these two things again, <coughs> Kamaja battery, that is the earth element as a result of Kamma, and Chirija Patavi, the earth elements produced by mind, Chaita. They go, they uh, are responsible for the production of the sound, the voice. And they are also subject to weather conditions, seasonal conditions. All these things are Sankara, conditioned phenomena or formations. They also rise due to, as a result of the mind and which causes Sankara. And these sound waves strike your eardrum, causing hearing consciousness. This, uh, the, the eardrum, the ear base, and also the hearing consciousness are also Sankaras. They are mentalities. They are conditioned things. And because the waves, the sound waves travel to your ear, your ears, you hear them. So there is this uh, process of cause and effect. Because uh, of the ear, because your hearing consciousness is very good, hearing, the eardrum is uh, sound, so you can hear. If you don't have ear, or your ear is, or your heart and hearing, or your eardrum is not working well, then you will not hear the sound. So that is, this is again the process of cause and effect. The striker element, here in this case sound, striking the base element, in this case the ear or ear drum. So this causes these uh, sankaras. 
the ear also is Sankara, and the hearing consciousness also is Sankaras. They arise continuously, not just one moment. So also with hearing, uh, seeing consciousness, smelling consciousness, tasting consciousness, touching consciousness, tangibility, all these things are conditional phenomena, conditioned phenomena, sankaras. When you hear these sounds, they are not permanent. They just, you hear it and then the sound disappears at once. So in order to do that, to understand, to realize this destruction of arisen formations, you've got to be mindful. Note at the moment of hearing. Of course, uh, only when you hear reach the stage of what you call what is known as Banganyana, you'll be able to see things very clearly, the destruction of uh, knowledge of destruction, not destruction at, this, at which stage you will realize, uh, you will see clearly the destruction of the arisen formations. At this stage, uh, you will not uh, shrink back or withdraw from your practice. You will not give up the practice. You will only advance boldly, daringly. Thus is how you sharpen your faculties. Sharpening means not making it blunt. Sharp by sharpening, you will advance, not withdraw. And this way, you, you will be able to, the sharpening of faculties will be real sharpened when you realize the stage of, the higher stage of insight knowledge, known as Panga Jnana. So, in order to see the two, the, uh, the fact that the truth, the truth of this uh, Sankaras, that they rise and pass away, in order to accept, accept this uh, uh, destruction of these informations, one should not indulge and uh, what is known as Pati Sankhana Bala, that is the power of reason or intellectualization, by which you will not see things directly. So you are exhorted or you are advised to note whatever arises in a simple way with simple language. If you see something, note a seeing, seeing, or hearing, hearing, or heat, hot, hot, or heat, heat, cool, cool. Stiffness, stiffness, tension, tension, in a common language. Note whatever arises continuously as they arise, as, so that you'll be able to develop your controlling faculties, Sati Samadhi. When your Sati Samadhi becomes strong, you'll be able to see the nature of the psychophysical phenomena, mind and body the cause and effect relationship that the object begins to arise and no sooner has it arisen, it passes away. Then these, you will see the fleeting away of these objects that they arise and pass away very quickly. So in order to see that, you should not indulge in intellectualization or the power of reason but it's in Karnayana 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 the uh, you, you should not just accept with intellect by intellectually that things arise and pass away that is not direct experience with, the, uh, with the just reasoning power, with intellectualization, you will not see things truly. You must see the sabhavas, that is the individual qualities or essences, as they arise and pass away. Only then you will see the truth. You will see it correctly. Otherwise, if you are reasoning, if you are accepting with reason, then uh, 
depending on that, you may be reporting your experience with reason or by uh, through thoughts or imaginations, not uh, the actual sabhavas, but the uh, what happens, what arises in your mind, imagination, thoughts, your intellect, then such a thing will be not the sincere reporting. There will be no no experiential knowledge. It will not be clear-cut. It will not be through your own experiential knowledge. Only with the experiential knowledge you will see the truth of the nature, the true nature of these objects. Namely, the cause and effect, the process of cause and effect, and the individual or natural characteristics, the universal characteristics, which will be your own experiential knowledge. Then you will be able to, to report, to speak about the truth of your own experience. Then such a report, such a saying, such a report will be sincere report. A clear-cut report, because it is reported through your own direct experience. Otherwise, if you are prone to intellectualization, uh, as to how things are, why and so on, asking many questions, trying to reason out, which is known as Pritisnagar Nabala, then you will not be able to report clearly. Uh, the, the knowledge will not be clear, will not be clear cut. Only with the bhavana bala, the power of meditation or experience or practice, will you be able to see things clearly and report clearly. Otherwise, if you go, if you go on reasoning out, intellect, intellectualizing, or conceptualizing. It may take one month, two months, three months, many months, you will not be able to see the truth. So, at this stage, leave aside your power of reason. Because as Westerners, they are intellectuals, they are prone to intellectualization, they are prone to conceptualization, or reasoning. But at this point, in this practice, Leave aside, set aside this power of reason. But uh, instead, you just note at once whatever arises immediately so as to see things as they arise. Otherwise, this producing uh, Anabala, conceptualization or intellectualization, will be a great disturbance and hindrance to this practice. So note whatever arises as they arise immediately. Just uh, watch immediately whatever arises. Note it with full force. That is the right way. Just try to know that this is the right way. You must take it as the right way. Then make your effort, energy. With this energy, there will be this uh, energy of the force of uh, faith and confidence will arise. And there will also be energy, the, the force, uh, uh, force of practice. You will be energetic, uh, force of practice. You will be energetic, uh, force of practice.